From the last video, I have decided I am going to try to avoid calling new, and I think I should probably justify why to you. Remember, we're trying to build this ship class. I'll just draw part of our Venn diagram here. And this is our ship class, and let me draw the different bottle caps we talked about in the previous videos. We have, I believe, if I remember right, it was velocity. Yeah, that was, that's a big bottle cap for velocity information. We have uh, input handling. We had the thing that's going to handle the boundary conditions. And we also had positional information. Positional information. And then the thing that's going to handle the rendering of our ship. And so th if we built this ship as a class, it would be a pretty beefy class with with all this functionality in there, but instead we're going for a component slash entity design pattern instead. And and let me let me show you the different the, the problem with new. Okay, let's say this is our heap. Okay, this is the heap, and and a heap is just a bunch of RAM, and each piece of RAM has memory address so zero through I don't know some big number of pieces of RAM n. Okay, well, if I built ship as a class and I instantiate ship as an instance of a class, then all of a sudden all my data, uh, new comes out here, and it's, say I call new to get my ship out on the heap instead of statically as I've been doing in previous videos. So I call new and I instantiate one of these ship objects. Well, what's going to happen out in RAM is we'll have velocity information right here. And we'll have our input information right here, and positional. Well, maybe not in this order, but but it doesn't really matter. All the data will be located right by each other, all the other pieces of data. All right here is our ship instance. Looks like I drew it a little bit too big, so let me shorten that up. Well, on your CPU, I'll go over here to the bottom left. And let's say this is the CPU. All right, in order to process this data and work on the data and do cool things with that data, the CPU has to retrieve this data. All right, and, and going out to RAM is about as slow for CPU as it is for RAM to go out to your hard drive. Actually, that's an extreme generalization. But let's just say accessing RAM to a CPU is extremely slow. It's time consuming. So the less we can access RAM from the CPU, the better. Okay, if you have a hard drive that spins and and you, you notice it's really slow and that sort of thing, it takes up a lot of time. Same idea to games, especially in games where we're just trying to save frame rate as, as, as much as possible. We do not want to access RAM. But in order for the CPU to execute code uh, on this instance of my ship object, and chances are the code inside of my ship object is going to compute using this data right here, the CPU has to load it. Well, on your CPU is this thing called cache. All right, we'll do it in green. Why not? And there's different levels of cache. L2 cache, L1 cache. The more cache you have, the more expensive the CPU is. L1 cache is closer to the CPU than L2 cache, that sort of thing. I'm going to avoid all those details, but essentially the CPU says, RAM, give me this object, or give me this data out here. And RAM CPUs don't know about objects. They just know about data. After we compile our code down to the assembly level, the objects are gone. Go watch my assembly programming playlist if you want to. Okay, but all this data gets copied in. All right, so here we go. We'll do velocity data and the input data. And if I drew my green box big enough, I'd probably be able to fit it all in here. But hopefully you get the idea that all that data shows up in here, rendering, so on and so forth. Okay, because it's all contiguous right here in RAM. When the CPU says, I need a chunk of RAM, the CPU also assumes I'm probably going to need uh, everything around what I'm trying to access. So if the CPU says, give me the velocity, it also says, oh, well, there's data uh, in this direction. Give me everything that way. And give me everything this way, whatever would be up in here. And so that loads what's, what they call a cache page or something to that effect. Well, the problem with calling new, using this component design pattern, new 
is able to kind of spread these stuff out, this stuff out. Now, all of a sudden, each one of these bottle caps becomes an object. Okay, an object that we're adding to another object here. So let's say I call new, and generally new will put things out there contiguously, but as we call new and delete, and new and delete, it's just like people moving in and out of of neighborhoods as people move in and move out and move in and out. And things can get fragmented. That's probably a bad example. Better yet, on your hard drive, if you've ever defragmented a hard drive, the longer you go without defragmentation, data gets spread all over the hard drive. Okay, so it's very possible that with this ship, I say new ship, and we'll do this one in blue. I'm going to say new ship, and new decides to put the ship here. Alright, and then I say, okay, well, give me a new velocity component. All right, we'll go over here and new decides for some whatever reason the velocity component ends up over here. So velocity and we'll, we'll circle this component instance in black and let's say input ends up over here. Input and boundary handling conditions over here and that's probably enough for now I guess. Let me, oh why not? Positional and rendering. I'll put rendering way up here. Rendering. And sure enough, it's it's roughly the same amount of data that we're taking up. If I could draw these things to scale, it's it would be roughly the same amount of heap space. But now all of a sudden it's scattered around. Okay, my ship data is scattered around the heap. So when the CPU decides, okay. We're crunching and grinding, and we need to do something with the positional data and the rendering data. All right? We say, hey, give us the position of the ship. So the CPU comes out to RAM here. And this is all governed by the operating system. But it says, okay, I need this data here, and I need everything up to maybe even that far. Okay? And all this way. So all this data here, and there's other data just hanging out in RAM for... It's, it's, it is whatever it is. Well, we load that data into the cache right there. But then immediately I say, oh, well, now I need to do, I need to render the positional information. I got the positional information, but I need to render out here. So I need to, I need to swap out what I put in cache and bring in the rendering thing. And then all of a sudden we thrash the cache. There's a key term. Right, if we say positional rendering, positional rendering, positional rendering, and where rendering has to come in, and then it has to go back out, and positional in and out, and in and out, and, and nothing really stays in the cache all nice and compact together. Instead, we're, we keep paging it in and out. And this also goes with Windows or any operating system that has a page file where they have some virtual memory, and they page things out to the hard drive, that sort of thing. And so we want to avoid thrashing the cache. That's like hideously, horribly bad thing to do, uh, because all that data movement to memory costs time and will increase your frame rate. All right, so there's a problem with calling new. You don't have control of that. If you do some object pooling, or you're very explicit about how your objects are laid out, then the it's more cache friendly. I mean, chances are you won't thrash the cache as much. And, and that that's the design we're going for here. And so somehow we need to be able to compactly put our data together, but then also have this nice bottle cap design. So I'm going to avoid new as much as possible just for that reason. Now this may be a premature optimization, but I have some buddies and some uh, professional studios that they, they they live and breathe by this, and why? Because it's killed them, right? It totally slowed down, and ruined their frame rate, and that sort of thing. So we want to be proactively uh, cache friendly. Now we can do that with object pooling. I don't think I'll do that immediately now because I'm already throwing this entire redesign at you. This redesign right here, we're doing this overhaul. And so I think what we'll do next is I'll do, I'll, instead of doing object pooling, I'm just going to put all my data next to each other. I'll still have components, but I'll, it will still be cache friendly. So that, that's where we're headed into in the next video.